All right, Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I am just Mopar Joe. So the word on the internet is 440 Source is making an aftermarket engine block that'll be an affordable choice for the normal guy out there that wants to make some big power. I saw it on Facebook. It had like over a thousand likes or something. And then it dawned on me that a lot of my viewers don't have Facebook. They don't like Facebook. They don't do social media really at all. So I reached out to Brandon at 440 Source and I went through some of the questions. There was a lot of repeated questions about the engine block in the comments of that video. So I have those questions and answers for you in this video today. I'll give you a brief overview of them and I'll actually put up Brandon's actual quotes of what he said. You can pause that if you'd like to see it. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown on this engine block. Here's some of my favorite things about this idea. So uh, this will be an option that can eliminate the girdle altogether. We won't have to have a girdle anymore. There's not gonna be any more need for concrete filling a stock block. You're not gonna have to go out and find a stock block from your RV or wherever, uh, buy it for a thousand dollars, tear it down, get greasy, dirty, nasty, do away with the internals of that you're gonna have a block you can buy. You can have it machined. It'll have priority oiling and no need for the girdle to get over that 700 horse or 800 or whatever your belief is on what the block can take. This thing's rated over a thousand horsepower. We're gonna get into that. That's one of the questions. So I'm just Mopar Joe. If you haven't subscribed already, check out the channel. Uh, my last two dyno videos series were of 440 source kits. I got a 500 stroker kit. I just did a 512 stroker kit, made over 700, uh, exciting stuff. Let's get into it. Here we are with our questions. Number one, will it have full-time rocker oiling with screw in restrictors that you could put an adjustable size? Uh, the answer to that is yes, they are instituting that feature. So what that would do is allow you to restrict oil to your rockers or rocker shafts and allow uh, less oil to make it to the top to kind of control that flooding out feature that sometimes happens in Mopars. So your drain back will be better because there'll be less oil to drain back. Uh, number two, any options for different main bearing size? So he says no on the RB version. Uh, that's their first version they're doing. Uh, standard RB main bearing size. The thrust bearing will be the large later size, so you can run any of the any main bearings that that's offered. So the earlier, smaller size in the block, or the larger size in the block. I would assume they kept it that way um, as well, so that their stroker kits would work in their stroker block. Uh, here's a big one: what size pickup tube, if any? So it will have a half inch pickup tube uh, standard. So as well as a dash 12 AN port threaded into the front of the block. So if you're using external oiling, you don't have to have any kind of external oil pump and or cover, etc. cetera. Uh, here's a big one. When's the release date? So we all want to know when is this happening? Uh, they're hoping to have their first shipment in stock by the end of the year 25, 2025. So that's this year and be in full high volume production three to four months later. So by spring of next year, spring of 26, uh, there should be no availability issues. The next part comes down to money. That's what we're all concerned about at the end of the day. Um, I said, what's the rough cost estimate? And I'll put his quote up here. Uh, they're hoping for 29.95. So that's an early projection. Uh, the trade war, all that sort of stuff. Um, you never know what kind of tariff stuff is going to happen, but yeah, if you want to pause and read through that, you can. And it does make sense. They don't even know their final cost until after they receive the item, get all the final bills, delivery charges, etc. So every, I understand every business needs to make money and it is what it is. Um, this was my question. I wanted to know how thick were the cylinder walls? Uh, so they are Siamese, uh, 250 thousandths. That's a quarter inch thick. 
They're designed for the four or 500 bore, can be taken out to four or 600 max. So uh, he mentions there, you know, if you're doing your standard 30 over rebuild, after you ran this block a long time and it wore in the cylinders, you could do that three times before you hit the max diameter. So they're designed to last everyone a lifetime if you get the block. So that's exciting. And he mentions uh, more about his um, experience with the Mopar blocks. So if you want to pause and read that, uh, Brandon's really a, a wealth of knowledge on a lot of that stuff. Uh, here's another good one that I, I, I did take from the questions on Facebook and I, I wanted to know, everybody wants to know. So what is the projected horsepower rating for the block? So he talks about some of the other blocks that they had studied and uh, he also mentions here the Keith Black block was really his inspiration for how to make the inner webs or the bulkheads of the block. I was wondering about what criteria, how do you judge, you know, how much horsepower a block will take without being able to test it. And the quick answer to that, I did find from their Facebook post, it does say 1800 horsepower capable. So that's more than double what the uh, stock blocks are handling now. That's pretty awesome. Uh, will it have cross bolted mains? Uh, yes, it will. One, two, three, and four mains are all cross bolted. Uh, number nine, the main caps, will they be cast iron as sold or billet caps? So they come as cast, but because of the cross bolting, they're substantially thicker, wider cap than a factory 440. Um, he says extreme cases, if you're north of 2000 horsepower, you could still upgrade to a billet cap yourself, just like on the factory block. So that's still an awesome option for the big power guys. Uh, is there a provision for a mechanical fuel pump? Yes, just like the factory. A lot of aftermarket blocks, I could see them, uh, you know, blocking that space off just to claim that it's more strength or whatever. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, that they want a 572 in their, quote, street car. And, that, you know, it may be for a drag and drive deal. It may be for whatever and still want to use a mechanical fuel pump. I could see it. That's, that's pretty interesting. Um, Let's see, what uh, number 11, what's the deck height compared to a standard RB engine? So it is the standard RB deck height of 10.725. So not, not taller than that. Um, are there any lifter provisions or modifications? The bosses around the lifters are made substantially thicker than stock for extra support. Uh, it does have extra material to bush if you'd like. Uh, full oil galley, oil galley, so you can run hydraulic flat tappet or hydraulic roller cams if desired. So all that's great. Um, obviously with any, any new block, I would, I would want to measure those just to be sure it's in spec with what you have and is all happy. Um, this was another question. Joe and I had came up with this, you know, what, what kind of hardware is required for freeze plugs, except, you know, the plugs in your block, and whatever. So uh, that's really nice. The standard inch and five eighths for pressing freeze plugs. Uh, I know the, I'm pretty sure the bulldog block, like I have for the 580 to build, um, it takes a smaller kind of plug in it. It's a little different. Um, max bore and stroke capabilities. So they've tested, tested it up to four or 500 bore and stroke, which makes the 572. It can go to four or 600 and you make it go a larger stroke crank uh, with some clearancing, but I, I'm assuming that going over the four or 500 stroke is not a, uh, an easy off the shelf crank to grab that may get you into some big bucks there. Uh, another question, number 15, everybody wonders about this. Uh, what is the nickel content? So what nickel content are we having? He said, it's not finalized yet. And for the quick answer to that, um, 
it, they're not completely set yet on that. They're using a ASTM A48 gray cast iron. So my engineer people out there will know what that is and kind of the strength of that metal uh, versus he mentions the MS3958 cast iron is what Chrysler's standard was. So all that's over my head, but if you'd like to pause and, and read this so you'll have the information, here it is. Or Next question, this was one of mine. I always wonder how much, uh, what's the weight of these engine blocks out there. Um, uh, he said a factory 440 block is 230 pounds. They're expecting this to be just over 300. So fairly close to what that bulldog block was that I weighed. Um, and 17, this is a big one. Uh, what inspired them to put that into production? So, uh, it looks like back in 2006, 2008, uh, they were going to build a block and then the, the recession happened. So they designed aluminum stealth cylinder heads back in 06 uh, and sold over 25,000 of those. With the sales of those heads, they thought, let's go ahead and put a block into production. So they wanted the equivalent the block version equivalent to their aluminum heads. And over the last 25 years, they've got to the point where they're able to design and manufacture that together. So they have over a thousand items now. Uh, they're, all, they're all listed here in this response. If you'd like to see that, if you didn't already know. Uh, but Brandon says that he puts a lot of time at home and thought into that process. So it's really cool that he shared that with me and allowed me to share it with all of you. So hopefully that can answer some of our early questions about this engine block coming. I mean. Well, hopefully that helps somebody out there. There is an exciting new block coming out for Mopar enthusiasts like ourselves. I appreciate y'all watching. And thanks to Brandon and Mike and everybody at 440 Source. I'll catch you next time. people.